Hello, in this video we're going to talk about interrupts and debugging systems that have interrupts in them. Now interrupts give us all problems and at the heart of this is a appreciation really of exactly what's going on in a program in terms of the timing. And that's more and more true as we use ready-made libraries and make assumptions about timing in software. So I'm going to just show you some really simple techniques that allow you to um, understand your programs and basically debug them as you're going on. Now to do this I've got some hardware you can see here it's a standard eBlocks board I've got a combo board with some displays and stuff on and switches I've got a little motors board we're going to use later and uh, this is on port C and I've got a splitter and a little logic analyzer that we're going to use. Um, so that's the hardware and this is our first program right and in the main routine um, there's an, an interrupt enable icon and then an endless loop and all the programming is really in the interrupt. Let me just show you the properties of that enable interrupt icon. Where is using timer two and um, there's some settings here and the key thing is it gives us an interrupt frequency of 100,000 interrupts a second with a, a standard clock speed of 32 megahertz. Uh, so that's every 10 microseconds this routine timer int will be triggered and what we do here is what we want to do is we want to understand when our interrupts are being triggered and also how long they're being take how long they take so what we do is we output a logic one to port c bit zero at the start of the interrupt and then we output a zero to port c zero at the end of the interrupt and then with a logic analyzer, we can see how long the interrupt is taking. And what I've got here is I've I've just got a variable timer 10 microseconds and I'm incrementing that um, timer 10 microseconds plus one and a little bit of logic to say, OK, if we've got 100 10 microsecond blocks, then we've got a millisecond. We've got a timer millisecond uh, counter as well. And basically, I just want to put a bit of code in there to show you kind of the, the timings that this kind of code takes. So what we've done is we've, we've downloaded that to the microcontroller. And if we now look at the logic analyzer and press the uh, play button and then zoom in a bit, then what you can see is we have an interrupt on port C bit zero of the required 10 microsecond pulse. But the code is effectively taking two out of the 10 microsecond um, units. And this is a real problem. This uh, microcontroller is going at 32 million instructions a second, but two microseconds are taking up by the interrupt. And the most common problem with interrupts is that you underestimate the amount of time that uh, code takes. And that then causes interrupt, uh, causes problems if the interrupt routines don't have enough time to finish. Um, and using a little logic analyzer like this, I, I'm quite confident now that two out of 10 microseconds is fine. So this particular program isn't the problem. But let's look at another program now that does give us problems. So this is our next project and I've got the same hardware. But now I'm using a DC motor with a feedback sensor. That's just a, um, a slotted piece of plastic and an opto sensor on bit seven. And we're driving that with a little potentiometer. So we're varying the speed. And we're using pulse width modulation to drive it. And what we want to do is we want to measure the feedback period. And we want to display that after some calculation in RPM on the screen. So the hardware is fairly straightforward. Let's look at the software. I've got four routines in the software, a main, a display update, a timer interrupt, and the feedbacker interrupt where the opto sensor is um, interrupted by the bit of plastic. And there's my system set up there. I've got um, a simple LCD, a potentiometer, and the DC motor, and they've got properties as you, as you can imagine. The main routine, enables an interrupt, initializes the hardware, and then in an endless loop, 
it detects whether a flag is set um, so that the display needs updating. And we have a 100 millisecond timer effectively here in the timer interrupt. So every 10 microseconds, we output high on C4, output uh, a low on C4 at the end of that, so we can see this uh, operating and make sure it doesn't take up too much time. And then we've just got some calculations here with a couple of variables, timer 10 microseconds and timer milliseconds. And if timer milliseconds equals 100, we set a flag, display needs updating. Now, what we don't do is update the display inside this interrupt, because if we did that, it would give us problems. Um, so we set the flag and then we detect here in the main routine that the display needs updating. You want to keep this routine as small as possible because that minimizes the errors. The feedback interrupt happens every time the opto sensor is um, triggered um, and we've got a flag there triggered. The first time we set some um, set some variables to be the same as the timer. The second time we then calculate the time of interruption. So once we know how long it takes for one of the three veins on the sensor to be triggered, then we can calculate the time of one cycle and hence the RPM um, speed. So that's the feedback interrupt. So there's two types of interrupt here. And this is the display routine. And you can see there's quite a lot going on in the display routine. And if we let the timer interrupt run, then the display will get upset and it'll probably, it, 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 you won't get anything on the display. So what we do is every 100 milliseconds, we disable the interrupts going in. And you can see there's quite a lot of different uh, commands there for the display, sorting out the cursor, printing various things, doing lots of calculations involving RPM and times. And then at the end of the routine, we re-enable the timer interrupt and the feedback interrupt. And of course, we also, at the start of that routine, we output one to C3, and at the end, we have zero to C3. So on each of the three routines, we're using a pin on port C um, as a little flag to tell us what's going on. Now, the great thing is that when you um, run that, then we can see all sorts of signals and we can check that our system is working OK. So I just stop that now. Let's zoom out and look at those signals. So here's the PWM output. That's constant. That never changes. Um, and of course, that's changed by the potentiometer, but there's always something on the PWM. Um, here you can see the display routine. So this display routine is actually 60, 60 milliseconds now. So to do the calculations and the display, it takes 60 milliseconds of time. These are the timer interrupts. And the timer interrupts are only enabled when the um, display is not being used. The same with the feedback interrupt. And this is the feedback pin. So this is the uh, opto sensor being interrupted and you can see the times there. So the, um, the timer interrupt is at 10 microsecond intervals, as you can see. Um, in this case, the feedback vein is at about um, three milliseconds and you can see the 60 milliseconds there of the display routine and this technique of using a single bit at the start of every routine and then releasing it at the end of every routine allows you to make sure that you've not got timing problems in your interrupts and it's a really useful way of, of working and of course once your program is up and running then you can delete those little flags that you're using to do to check the timing. Okay, I hope that helps you debug uh, your interrupt circuits. Uh, and thank you for watching.